Welcome to the second webinar on Java EE6 uh, webinar series. Today we are going to cover CDI basics. Uh, CDI is a very important topic in Java EE6. Uh, by the way, I'm going to actually cover CDI advanced and extensions uh, next week. So I'm going to move these two topics uh, right before JSF. Okay? Alright, so let's move on to the presentation. CDI basics. So we have uh, three topics on CDI. CDI basics and CDI advanced and uh, CDI extension. And this is for CDI basic concept. So we'll, we will talk about what is and why uh, dependency injection. I'm sure you have used dependency injection uh, in many other places and frameworks, uh, especially with the Spring framework. Uh, and what is and why CDI as a dependency injection scheme of choice? And then we'll talk about CDI theme, which is called, which is loose coupling and strong typing. Uh, and uh, we'll cover bin definition, and uh, and then we'll see some of the code from the uh, by seeing the basic dependency injection using uh, CDI at inject annotation. We'll talk about the concept of qualifier, and uh, we will see at named built-in qualifier and then we'll talk about stateful object and uh, then we will see how we can use CDR in not only in Java EE application but also in Java SE application. So what is and why dependence injection? So I'm sure again uh, probably quite familiar with the dependence in injection so I'm not going to talk about much on why and what is dependence injection. Basically in dependence injection scheme uh, you specify what your dependencies are, not how to obtain them. So how to obtain them is the domain of container, uh, meaning container is responsible for uh, the uh, discovering and wiring those dependencies in your code. The reason dependency injection is so popular and useful is because dependency injection makes unit testing and marking easier. And that dependency injection allows a container to do bin discovery and bin wiring, so you don't have to do it yourself. So dependency injection frameworks have been around for quite a while. Uh, so these are the examples of existing dependency injection frameworks or containers, uh, starting with Spring Framework and the Juice and Seam and EJB3.x and now CDI. So you can think of CDI as the latest and the best and standard base dependency injection, dependency injection scheme. Alright, so what is and why CDI? Meaning why you want to use CDI as a dependency injection scheme of choice. So CDI uh, is actually developed as part of the Java uh, the community effort, GSR 299. It provides unified dependency injection, meaning it unified uh, all the dependency injection scheme out there from Spring, Juice, and Scene. So now you are, you are, you know, CDI actually basically provide uh, the standard base and unified dependency injection scheme so that you don't have to use anything else. And it also provides a very richer uh, dependency injection models than uh, this existing dependency injection scheme. And we'll see those examples today a bit. And then next week when we talk about CDI advanced, you will see, in fact, those richer uh, dependency injection, injection schemes uh, that are provided by CDI. And uh, one of the uh, features of CDI is a type safe dependency injection. Uh, so we will talk about this one in a bit more detail in the rest of the presentation today. And designed for use with a stateful object, uh, which are called sometimes scope objects. So these are not that much different from what you already know in typical Java EE application. Uh, request a scope and session scope and application scope and things like that. So again, we'll talk about the scope objects in a bit more detail in the rest of the, uh, this presentation. The original goal of CDI, uh, in fact, it used to be called the web themes. Our original goal of CDI was uh, to provide uh, EJB as a JSF managed themes. Uh, and uh, that goal is also achieved in CDI. And, but uh, you know, the, 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 the goal of the CDI has, in fact, expanded to provide the unified dependence injection. So this used to be a very small goal which is achieved and uh, then it became much bigger, uh, the, uh, the project. Basically providing standard-based uh, dependence injection scheme for Java EE platform. Okay, so extensibility. So this is something that we are not going to talk about in detail today. 
Uh, well, the thing is that CDI provides extensibility, meaning uh, it provides a service provider interface extending Java EE platform. So it basically allows Java EE platform to be flexible and portable and extensible architecture. So if you don't like the existing service that is provided by the existing Java EE platform, you can actually replace it, you can augment it, and uh, you, know, you can add new platform level services yourself. So in a sense, you don't have to actually wait Java EE7 uh, you know, if you want to actually uh, the, uh, the utilize some of the features that you want to actually use without actually waiting for Java E7 standard. So you know, the reason is because CDI provides this extensible capability for Java EE platform. So why CDI for Java EE6? So before Java EE6 uh, introduction on CDI, uh, there actually a lack of uh, there was a lack of general purpose dependency injection scheme on Java EE platform. And of course, Java EE5 provides a resource injection uh, using this annotation, like at EJB, at persistent context and persistent unit and resource. But basically, these annotations are designed for injecting only known resources to the container. And uh, there is no general purpose dependency injection scheme available on Java EE platform, like in Spring Framework. Spring Framework allows you to inject any Java object uh, into your code, but Java E5 didn't have that kind of general purpose dependency injection scheme. So that's the reason uh, we need uh, CDI as a general purpose dependency injection scheme for Java EE moving forward, starting with Java EE6. Reason number two, we need type-based injection. So non-type-based injection such as a string name or XML-based injection is very fragile. You don't know whether something is wrong until you actually run the code in production environment. And type-based injection enables better tooling because uh, the tool can actually take advantage of type. Okay? So again, type-based injection is a very important concept in CDI, and we'll look into that in a bit more detail in the following slide. In terms of terminology, CDI stands for Context and Dependency Injection for, Injection for Java EE. So even though CDI is designed for Java EE platform, as you will see later on, you can actually use CDI even on standard uh, Java SE application. Now, well is reference implementation of CDI uh, from JBoss, and uh, it actually provides extended CDI support for serverless container, meaning it doesn't have to be Java EE platform only. I mean, you can actually use uh, the, uh, the uh, CDI in, in serverless containers such as Tomcat and Jetty. And the uh, Weld already provide uh, those CDI support for those containers. And it also provides CDI enhancements for extension writers. So if you want to actually extend, uh, CDI, extend Java E platform, for example, using CDI, you can take advantage of the CDI enhancements that come with the Weld. And the Weld also, Weld also provides a Maven archetype uh, for CDI for Java EE, so you can build a CDI application using Maven. Okay, so the CDI theme, uh, loose coupling with strong typing. So these are examples of loose coupling. Uh, so you know, we'll in fact talk about these uh, decoupled. Uh, the uh, loose coupling feature of CDI in a bit, you know, very, mu very much in detail in the rest of the presentation and next week CDI advanced. So decouple server and client, meaning dependency from dependency user. So using very well, defi very well defined types and qualifiers. So we'll talk about the concept of qualifiers and allow server implementation to vary. So this dependency, how it is implemented, is not the concern of the dependency user. Uh, decouple lifecycle of collaborating components, meaning dependencies from dependency user. So basically, CDI container provides contextual lifecycle management for those dependencies. So you don't have to actually deal with those lifecycle management of the dependencies. And decouple uh, the uh, orthogonal concerns from business logic. So it actually provides AOP feature uh, in the form of interceptors and decorators. So we'll talk about interceptors and decorators in advanced CDI next week. And also event model is also very much decoupled from the so message producer, meaning event producer is decoupled from event uh, consumer. 
So again, we'll talk about this decoupled feature in detail in the rest of the CDI presentation this week and next week. Strong typing, as I said before, uh, the, one of the key themes of CDI is to provide the dependency injection uh, based on Java type. Right? So the reason is because the type-based injection has these advantages. No more reliance on string-based names. String-based dependency injection is very fragile. You cannot detect the problem during compile time. So by, by using type-based injection, the compiler can detect the type mismatch problems at compile time, and casting is mostly eliminated, and strong tooling is again very much possible. And uh, another advantage of strong typing is that semantic code errors, even though you cannot find these problems at the compile errors, if there is a problem, you typically you will be able to find this kind of uh, problem, semantic code errors, uh, in the initial part of the initial run-up, uh, startup of the application, rather than like a two months later, uh, after production environment is up and running. Uh, again, it leverages the Java type system based on annotation. So we'll see examples of this one, uh, you know, in the rest of the presentation. All right. So moving forward, De bean definition in the context of CDI. So for now, I'm actually talking about the concept of CDI, and in a few minutes, in a few slides later, we're going to actually get into the code. Okay. So uh, be patient a little bit. What is a bean anyway? So there are in fact many bean types. Uh, so there is a JSF bean, there is EJB bean, spring, spring bean, seam bean, juice bean, and CDI. So when we say a bean in the context of CDI, what kind of bean are we talking about? So Java EE needs a unified bean definition. So there is in fact the uh, managed bean 1.0 specification, which is in fact part of Java EE6. It defines what a bean stands for, you know, what a bean means. So the B definition on the managed bean one that our specification is very simple. It means a container managed posers. Okay? So it provides a lightweight component model and basically instances are managed by the container. So managed bean uh, also actually provides some uh, basic uh, services, lifecycle management in terms of post construct and pre destroy and uh, injection of resource and uh, interceptors and around invoke. So here you can specify managed bean here, and then this is the resource dependencies, uh, and uh, this is a post construct, meaning uh, this method will be uh, executed once this bean object instance gets created, and these are interceptors. Uh, for now, you know, don't 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 actually focus that much on this managed bean uh, annotation and resource. Uh, you know, basically you are going to use mostly post construct and pre uh, the uh, uh, destroy okay, for uh, performing some kind of operations before and after object instance is created and destroyed. Okay? And you are going to really use this resource, you're going to actually use at inject uh, annotation. Okay, so when we say EJB bean or REST bean or CDI bean, what do I mean by what do we mean by that? Okay, so you can think of everything as a managed bean with the extra services. So EJB bean is a managed bean with EJB specific services. For example, transaction support, security support, threat safety support, and persistent support. And REST bean is considered as a managed bean with the HTTP support. And CDI bean is a managed bean with the CDI services. So CDI services, uh, based CDI services include auto discovery by the container, set of qualifiers, scoping, bean expression language name, and interceptors alternative and things like that. Again, we are going to talk about these CDI-based services in the rest of the CDI presentation today and next week. So, uh, CDI bean is very simple. You can, it can be as simple as just a Java class. Okay? So, you know, greeting class, and uh, so this could be used as a CDI bean. So there is no bean declaration in XML file required. And there is no notation required. So EJB bean is considered as a, you know CDI bean. So here we define the stateless bean. All right. Now this is actually kind of important. Automatic bean discovery. So how does container discover CDI beans? Container scans the class path, uh, and that class path could contain all the job files. 
uh, and the job files could be from application or container. You know, there could be container uh, system level job files that are provided by the container, and then there are application job files. Now, what you want your container to scan is only the application job files for discovery of your CDI beans. Now, how does, how do you actually how do you tell how do you instruct the container to scan only application job files for bean discovery? Uh, you are going to instruct the container by specifying by specify by actually specif by actually having uh, beans.xml file. Uh, so for WAR file, if you have a beans.xml file on the web INF directory, and for job file, if you happen to have a beans.xml file for meta int directory, that indicates to the container that that job file is the application level job file, and that's the one that you want the container to scan. Okay? So beans.xml file, we'll see example of this one in a few seconds. Uh, unlike Spring, it is not for declaring beans. In Spring Framework, you know, you declare all your beans uh, in this in the XML file. Uh, that's not the purpose of beans.xml file in CDI. Its main purpose is basically to indicate to the container that uh, you know the job file is needs to be scanned because that indicates the uh, from the application. Okay? So it could be empty XML file. So the presence of beans.xml file indicates to the container that that is the application level application level job file. Uh, you are going to see some examples of how beans.xml file is used for advanced features of CDI, for example, like alternative and decorator. Again, we'll see those examples later on, actually next week. All right, so moving forward. So we are going to actually see the actual code from this point on. Bean injection. So how are you going to inject a bean on CDI using CDI dependence injection? You are going to use at inject annotation with a Java type and uh, then name of the variable and the java type could be either java class or java interface so in this example basically what i'm saying is that i want the container to find any greeting type object and instantiate it and inject it for me okay so that's basically what i'm saying when i have this line by the time i'm using this greeting variable the container is responsible for finding greeting type object and create an instance of it and inject it for me so that I can use that object right here. Okay? So that is how you're going to inject the bean in CDI using at inject annotation. Very simple. Now, where can you inject the bean? So example we have seen over here is basically we are injecting at the field level. So this is a field uh, level injection. So we call field injection. And we call this, you know, the point of injection as an injection point. So injection point could be a field, which we have seen in the previous slide, or it could be method parameter. So method parameter could be uh, the parameter of a constructor or any method of your choice or set a method. And later on, actually next week, uh, you could also have a method in terms of producer and observer. Again, we'll like to see examples of producer and observer uh, in CDI advanced presentation next week. Okay, so this is an example where you are going to use a constructor method for injecting an object. So here, this is the uh, MyGreeter class, and this is a MyGreeter constructor method of this class. And uh, this constructor method receive an object, greeting type of greeting. And when you use at inject at the method level like this, what it means is that you are asking the container to create Again, to find the greeting object and greeting type and, uh, and instantiate that object and then inject it for me so that I should be able to use that greeting object in the rest of the code. All right, so our first uh, demo, so it's exercise one. So we're going to actually go to exercise one. So I'm going to just use a sample application that come with the hands-on lab. Okay, so let's actually try uh, the. Uh, so we're gonna actually see uh, a bean is injected at the field level and constructor level and method level, and then we are gonna actually see how we can actually inject EJB into your code. Okay, so let's try this code first. So I'm gonna run this code. Uh, these are all native projects, so you should be able to use any IDE of your choice. I'm actually using NetBeans at this point. Uh, the lab document is actually created using uh, this Eclipse, uh, so you can use any IDE of your choice. 
All right, so it's basically, you know, the uh, uh, display some uh, the uh, information. Hello, code camper. So let's see the code. So this is uh, this is the where we are injecting greeting uh, object. So we have a greeting class. A greeting class is a very simple uh, in a class. So it basically contains a single method called the greet, and uh, it just returns hello and the name of uh, name that is actually being passed. Okay. So in this case, uh, because we inject the greeting, the container will find the greeting object, uh, greeting type class or interface, and uh, then it will create an instance of it for me so that by the time I'm actually using right here, I'm actually using that code, greeting and greet, uh, it just, you know, I can use it. Okay. So that, that is the case that uh, we are using field injection, meaning greeting object is injected by the container at, uh, you know, at the field level. Now let's see example of constructor level injection. Again, this is what you have seen in the code. So here we have HTTP servlet, and this is uh, the uh, constructor method of HTTP servlet. Again, here greeting object is injected. So this is a constructor level injection, and the rest of the code is the same. Okay, so if I run the code, it should work exactly the same. Uh, what about uh, what about the uh, a method? So here we are going to actually have uh, inject greeting object at a method level. So this method here is actually in init method, but this could be any method of your choice. I can even say xxx or something like that. So here again, you know, for any method, if you happen to have inject annotation, what it means that it means that whatever arguments you have. Uh, will be actually instantiated and injected. Uh, the uh, the uh, it basically what it means is that you know whenever the when this method is uh, the uh, the the object is actually gets created and uh, then in this case we are basically get that object and then we just save it in greeting uh, variable here. Okay, and it works exactly the same. All right. Uh, moving forward, uh, so let me just uh, change this code. Uh, now, in terms of interface, so let's see examples of uh, the type is interface. So here, uh, you know, here we are basically specifying greeting interface as a type. So what I'm saying to the container is that I want you to find any implementation of greeting interface and then instantiate an object it for me and then inject it. Okay, so if you take a look at greeting interface, it's an interface that contains greet method and then we have a formal greeting uh, which is implementation of greeting interface. So it will display formal hello and name uh, with this greet method. So if I run this guy, And uh, it works. Okay. So the type could be either Java class or interface type. Uh, now let's actually take a look at the case where we can inject EJB bean. So this is uh, this case. So we uh, let's see the code. So we have this hello servlet code. Now here, uh, if you take a look at greeting bean, this is in fact the EJB bean. So it's a stateless bean. Okay. So it works exactly the same. So let's run this code. Okay, so it works uh, as expected. Now, in Java E5, you are able to actually use at EJB, right? So that should still work. So let me just uh, comment out this one, and then we have to import a class. Okay. Now, you know this one works exactly the same, but uh, this is actually old way of doing things. So in injecting EJB, you don't have to use at EJB anymore. You can actually use at e at inject because that inject is a general purpose injection, okay? So you can inject in, in fact pretty much anything. So let's actually run this guy, and uh, it should actually work as expected. Same result, okay, like this. Okay. Let me just change this code back. All right, moving forward. Qualifier. 
So what is a qualifier? So qualifier, uh, the reason we need a qualifier is because for a given pin type, we have seen examples.